Amid all the football talk, our Who's Better segment goes into baseball, and we will have a, another installment of, of uh, or another round of football talk here in a bit. But before that, let's go to another installment of Who's Better, two household names as far as pitchers go. It is Greg Maddox, former Atlanta Brave and Chicago Cub, and played for um, some, some teams there at the end, as well as uh, Roger Clemens. And, and like I said, two guys, one in the Hall of Fame, and the other one, a lot of people have mixed opinions on if he should be in the Hall of Fame or not. What were some of your thoughts as you brought these two guys down? You look at the two, uh, and they're different type pitchers. Maddox is a guy who uh, depends on his ability to throw strikes. He could throw a complete game in 89 pitches, and the game would be over in an hour and 50 minutes. Right. Clements was a power guy who was going to beat you with power stuff, with it, with a high fastball. He was going to throw up and in. He was going to intimidate you a little bit. Maddox didn't do that. Maddox really couldn't intimidate you. Now, you saw a couple times in the postseason where Maddox had to put a little giddy up on his fastball. Maddox could throw the ball probably 93, 94 if he wanted to, but he didn't want to. He wanted right. to stay around 89, 90. Uh, the best pitch for Maddox was that pitch on a left-handed batter that would start out at his ribs and cut off over the inside corner. So there were two different types of pitchers uh, who relied on two different types of strengths to win. But when you look at the overall numbers, these are guys that played in the same era, uh, and these are guys that are both very familiar uh, if you've seen baseball in the last 30 years. Uh, as far as starts go, Maddox, so Matt, Maddox has 33 more starts uh, th than Clements does. Wins, only one difference uh, separates both of them, 355 to 354, right next to each other on the all-times win list. Winning percentage, Clements is a little bit higher. Uh, and now his ERA, Clements again, a little bit different in the National League and the American League, um, Clements pitched in both, uh, and he pitched in an era where when you pitch with the DH, you're allowed to stay in the game a little bit longer. Uh, they allow you to maybe face a weaker part of the lineup later on in the games, where if you're in the National League, you're going to have to come out for pinch hitters and stuff like that. There could be something set on the flip side where the American League, you have better hitters consistently throughout the lineup. Uh, but Maddox uh, having a higher rear rate, to me, surprised me a little bit being that uh, in the National League, he probably should have had a little bit of a lower ERA. Right. Um, he had a lower whip, which, because Maddox didn't really walk anybody, allowed a lot of hits, but didn't walk anybody. Mm -hmm. Clements didn't allow many hits, as you can see by his opponent. Batting average was much better. Uh, shutouts, Clements is more. Nowadays, nobody has shutouts anymore. And obviously, Clements has the better strikeout numbers. Um, now, when you look at their numbers in the postseason, these are guys who had the same amount of appearances in the postseason. Right. 35 appearances. Mm -hmm. Maddox made five out of the bullpen. Clements only made one out of the bullpen. That was in 2005 against Atlanta. If right. you remember him coming out in that game, 18 inning game that they, uh, the Atlanta wound up losing and being eliminated down in Houston. That was his only bullpen appearance. Maddox came out to get a save in the uh, LCS against the Padres one year. Uh, he was a guy that could do that if he had to. Uh, but overall, they made their bones starting. Losing record for Maddox, 11 and 14 in the postseason. Uh, but yet a, a better ERA than Clements, who got lit up a couple of games in, in the postseason. Now, he had some great postseason starts, like one in Seattle in 98, where he really dominated um, he really dominated Seattle that year. Uh, so that, that was in 2000. Uh, and Clements with a better whip in the postseason, despite the same amount of starts. So I would think that if uh, Maddox had one lower in the, post, in the regular season, he would have it in the postseason. But Maddox disappointed a little bit in the postseason. Post exactly. He was better early on in his mm -hmm. career uh, than he was later on. He was 7-4 and four at one point in his career in the postseason. Then he kind of faltered a little bit at the end there. Uh, and as you can see, complete games and, and, and K per nine. Uh, obviously, Clements is better at K per nine. Then you look at well, what I did was I wanted to get these guys over the same amount of period. So I took them from age 23 to 39. This is a 17-year span right. uh, almost. Uh, and their numbers, this is their average numbers, shockingly similar. Mm -hmm. Starts are only by two. Maddox made two more starts, averaged two more starts per year over that, over that span. Maddox had one more win, 17 and 10 to 16 and 8. Lower ERA for Maddox, lower whip for Maddox. Opponent batting average, a little bit better. And right. Again, these are the prime exactly. years, yeah. 23 to 39. A uh, little bit higher strikeouts per nine for Maddox than he did overall. Um, and then shutouts. Maddox won less than Clements. And again, this is the average 
over those six, over those 17 years. Mm -hmm. 17 years span. And you're thinking you're getting some of their best baseball at the, kind of the peak of their powers mm -hmm. at, um, for both of them at both times. Exactly. So the numbers are very similar uh, at both guys. Despite being different types of mm -hmm. pitchers, right. Clement's a power guy, Maddox a control guy, uh, their numbers are very similar. Uh, then you look at, uh, to me, I think this is the biggest thing, uh, is you look at awards. Uh, Clements dominated. Seven signing awards is unheard of. Uh, in those two years that he was in Toronto, as well as the end of his career in Houston, which people suggest maybe that's was the steroid years for Clements, he was lights out, right. 97, 98 in, in Toronto, and the last couple of years in Houston. Seven signing awards, 11 All-Star games for Clements, one MVP. Again, pitchers don't usually win MVPs. Award, yeah. Vita Blue, uh, Derek Dennis, actually, other pitchers to win MVPs. And he won the All-Star Game MVP in 86. Maddox, four signing awards, not bad. Right. Uh, eight All-Star Games, didn't win an MVP, whether it be the postseason or All-Star Game or anything like that. Um, and then <clears throat> that during the regular season, and then he didn't have any other type of you know postseason MVP awards or All-Star Game awards. Um, so that's the bigger difference there between awards one. Clements won awards, Maddox didn't. However, Maddox is a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. Clements won't be. Exactly. I do not think that yeah. they will put Clements in because of what he got himself into with Balco and all that other stuff, and then the phone call to his trainer. It's just a lot of shadiness surrounding Clements, despite how dominant he was. At one point, Clements was one of my favorite players in right. Major League Baseball. Right. Toward the end of his career, I kind of soured on him a little bit. But this was a guy who had dominant stuff. Uh, and it's a shame he won't be in the postseason. I still have uh, postseason. He won't be in the Hall of Fame. I think he should be in because I think he put up good enough numbers to where it shouldn't, you know, if he did steroids or not, he, he, his numbers were good enough anyway. Exactly. And I think he should be in the Hall of Fame. But if you had to ask me who had a better major league career, or let's put it this way, who would I want starting for me? In one game, if I had to have a guy to start, mm. I would want Roger Clements. The same, and I think that one of the things that you kind of point <clears throat> out that I think is kind of really telling is the fact that you look, take a look at their overall numbers, and yes, you know Maddox has you know 30, some, 30 plus more starts, about the same amount of wins. He's able to do it a little bit more efficiently, mm -hmm. and he's able to do it in the postseason. I think if you're starting a team saying, hey, we're going to play 162, who's yeah. your number one? Then I would take Maddox. Then maybe Maddox, right. right. But I think in both situations, you can still make an argument for Roger Clemens. And then in the postseason, it is easily uh, Roger Clemens. But like you said, he put himself in some of the hot water, and then he put his fate as a Hall of Famer in the hands of a bunch of writers. And while yeah. I think he's in, and even if I had a vote, I'd put him in. There's going to be guys, that do, whether it's him or Barry Bonds yep. or a few others. Or Rafael that, Palmeiro, they, all those right. guys, yeah. They, they, they won't be in. And, and also, because of the baseball rules, they might look like even before you get some of these voters who are younger, mm -hmm. they might slide off the ballot yep. before they can get the majority. Very gray area. Event. Very gray area. But, again, uh, we're, we're, we're talking about dominant guys. Um, a guy, if I had to win tomorrow, I've seen – uh, Maddox, I've just seen him fail too much. I'm sorry. The Braves should have won more when you have Maddox, Smoltz, and Glavin at a rotation. And Maddox and Glavin really didn't really do well in the postseason. 11 four, and 14 for Maddox, when you look at his regular season numbers, very disappointing in the postseason. Exactly. You think you do a really good job of, of finding these kind of razor-thin margins, whether it's regular season and or postseason. I think this one might be the most interesting one because, like I said, you have two different styles of pitchers mm -hmm. who pitch in about the same era. Yep. One will get awarded for it. And one will not. And I think that's kind of the, the, the goal there. And I think it's uh, a really good look at two guys that, like I said, once I said, household names as far as Major League Baseball pitchers are concerned. Once again, another good installment of who is better. Well, coming up next here on Overtime, it is news that is rocking college football right now. Right after the SEC about closed its main session during media days today, some big news came out about a pair of teams who might be joining the league. Two monsters in college football. We'll talk about it coming up next. <laughs> 